India is seeing a divide among the purchasing trends of its rich and poor amidst rising inflation. And this trend is visible among India's 700 million smartphone users too. Shilpa Rani Peta and Arundhati Ramanan bring us a report on why premium smartphones have seen bumper sales while feature phones declined in double digits. India's rich are increasingly buying and upgrading to new phones, while the low end of the pyramid is putting off new mobile phone purchases as inflation pinches. Data from market intelligence firm Counterpoint Research shows India's smartphone shipments fell 5% sequentially in the April to June quarter to around 37 million units as consumer demand declined. The trend is more visible in the entry and budget segments, which make up for one-third of the total smartphone market. Data from IDC and CounterPoint shows that the entry-level smartphone segment, which costs less than 10,000 rupees, declined over 15% in Q2, while feature phones declined 17% sequentially. Meanwhile, mid-range smartphones grew 21%, and the highest growth came from the premium segment, which grew 83% year-on-year. Entry tier is impacted a lot and entry tier is one third of the total smartphone market. Um, so that is impacted because uh, the, the offers dried up, uh, very few launches happened in that particular segment um, and, and consumers uh, were holding upon to their purchases. Now the growth is being driven by the mid and the premium tier. Um, while the overall market we are projecting at a single digit growth year on year, um, but the premium market is is likely to grow by 18 to 20 percent and that's a big um, uh, jump. Supply constraints that impacted smartphone sales in 2020 and 2021 have eased considerably and now it is rising input costs and inflation that's making smartphones costlier. The average selling price of smartphones grew 15 percent in the quarter to around $213 while it was $211 in the first quarter of 2022 and around $190 in 2021. As a result, consumers would rather repair their device or buy a refurbished one than buy a new phone. Supply chain, logistic issues were there, even the freight cost went up and then you have this macroeconomic headwinds that came into the picture. So overall we see, um, uh, we can see a 7 to 10 percent hike uh, that has happened year on year on certain models. Now that will negate a bit because uh, you you'll have festive offers coming in net net we can see that there could be end up as we go into festive season consumer might be paying up like five to seven percent more for their devices they could have bought uh, an year back this has smartphone makers too focusing more on launching mid and premium smartphones samsung for instance launched five new flagship smartphones this year and also recently launched its super premium z flip 4 and z fold 4 smartphones in india Priced between 90,000 to nearly 2 lakh rupees, these smartphones saw 50,000 pre-bookings in one day. On the day one, we have got 50,000 plus pre-booking. So it's a record pre-booking for us. So there were five new A-series which were launched. There have been new launches in M-series, which is 13, 13 5G, 33 and 53. So four M-series and similarly in the F-series. And this year we have launched five new flagship smartphones. So, you know, we are very, very bullish about the market. However, August sales that saw one round of festive sales are showing signs of optimism, having grown 8 to 9% after months of decline. All eyes are now on the festive season, a period that contributes 40% to annual smartphone sales. Retailers, too, are now counting on offers and discounts, not just to boost sales of new launches, but also clear existing inventory that piled up due to demand contraction. In Mumbai, with Shilpa Rani Peta, Arundhati Ramanan. Well, let's now take a look at the headlines in the startup space. Shruti standing by with the startup snapshot this evening. Shruti. Thanks for that. Let's take a look at the key startup headlines we're tracking this evening. FarmEasy recalls its draft IPO papers with plans of raising funds through rights issue instead. The e-pharmacy player cites market conditions and strategic considerations as reasons behind the withdrawal of its 6,250 crore rupees IPO plan. Paytm shareholders approved the reappointment of Vijay Shekhar Sharma as the managing director and CEO for another five years. The vote to retain the founder as the company's CEO comes despite concerns raised by proxy advisory firms over remuneration and commitment. Moving on, Nanda Nilekani backed ShopEx shuts down operations, filing an application under the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code. According to reports, the e-commerce enablement startup had raised over $50 million and was valued at over $100 million in its previous round. 
And finally, Sequoia's Startup Accelerator program Surge announces its seventh cohort with 15 early stage startups from India and Southeast Asia. Software and enterprise focused startups dominate the list, accounting for at least 10 out of 15 startups. And with that, it's back to you. Shruti, many thanks for joining us. Now, every year, more and more people in India fall under the disabled category, and not just because the definition of disability has been expanded. According to the 2011 census, over 2% of India's population, that's over 2.5 crore Indians, live with one form of disability or another. And this number is estimated to have risen considerably in the 11 years since that number was published. Shraddha Tiwari and Arundhati Ramanan report that this is opening a huge opportunity for assistive technology, especially given advances in robotics, AI, and machine learning. And social impact startups are lining up to dive into this space. However, there are numerous challenges that are crippling growth. Take a look. Hearing aids, prosthetics, wheelchairs, voice amplification systems, braille displays. Assistive technology comes in various shapes and sizes and is increasingly being tailor-made to suit changing needs. Technology has played a large role in the advances in this field. With a growing population needing this kind of aid, the assistive technology market in India is expected to grow at a CAGR of 5.6%, shooting past $60 billion a year in the next five years. This is good news for the over 2.5 crore Indians who live with one form of disability or another. But there's a gap. Data from Statista indicates that around 18% of India's disabled population does not have access to assistive tech products. One reason for this is that cost is prohibitive. The other has to do with business models that companies are using to design, develop and market this technology. Some of the more common assistive devices like wheelchairs, crutches and magnifiers are available direct to consumers. But these are usually rudimentary in design. Versions that are powered by newer technology are not. A number of startups which have emerged to meet the demand for assistive technology-enabled products in India, like Tressel Labs, which designs devices and systems to help the visually impaired with their reading, say they prefer the business-to-business -business model and only residual transactions involve selling directly to consumers. We actually figured out that um, B2B segments, or I would say schools, colleges, libraries, public libraries, uh, NGOs, uh, and even offices, they served as our uh, institutional uh, customers, where almost 70 to 75% of our deployments are. Experts and market players acknowledge that this can be a problem in a country like India, where around 69% of the overall disabled population, that's over 1.86 crore people, live in rural areas. But they say that reaching this large population poses problems that often go beyond cost effectiveness and logistics, and so serving institutions that have this reach is a better option. We don't have that kind of money to spend to the um, tier five, tier six cities or the village level. And the majorly coming from majorly PWD coming from those uh, uh, regions, right? And the, the person who are living in the Ahmedabad or Mumbai or Delhi or metro cities, tier one, tier two cities, they know about this product and they can procure from our distributor. The lack of funds has also meant that several startups in the assistive space are struggling to stay alive, let alone maintain their foothold in the market. But there are other limitations. For one, Assistive technology requires a high degree of customization, and that means online marketing and delivery systems are largely not viable. Another is legal. The processes for patenting devices and assistive technology are governed by different rules and regulations in different countries. So even though India is among the top three growth markets for assistive technology, Indian startups are limited from scaling their products to other markets. And accessing a market which, by whose estimates, is made up of roughly 15% of the world's population. Government intervention designed to support this space will prove crucial in the years to come, especially with global disposable income with the consumer market for assistive technology slated to reach $9 trillion in a few years. In Mumbai with Shraddha Tiwari, Arundhati Ramanan. And with that, it is time for us to wrap up this edition of India Business Hour. Thanks very much for watching. Stay tuned. The news continues on CNBC TV 18.